My dear Bagginses and Buffins. By the blood of our people, of your lands, kept safe. I see in your eyes the same fear that will take the heart of me. So do all who live to see such times. Uh, th this starts a bit of a problem I have as a fan of the films more than the books, where I don't know if the films, in particular this show, because I think uh, Peter Jackson does it great in the original trilogy, the lore of the elves, it's unclear to me what they're talking about from a person who's just watching the show. And I know this to be true because I've watched it with people who don't know anything else about Lord of the Rings. And they ask me questions based on this conversation here where they're talking about Valinor and they're talking about leaving and she's being honored and all this stuff. And she's she comes at it as if like she's being benched. She Like, oh, you guys are going to continue the fight without me and you're, you're putting me on the sidelines. Like, and she's like, oh, I'm going to... I'll never get to I'll never get to finish my my task. And it's unclear. Like I thought in Valinor she'd be able to still like do good deeds in Valinor. Like, I I'm just kind of confused based on this dialogue if the elves even understand their own lore or maybe she's just so obsessed that she's like not even thinking clearly about what happens in Valinor. Um cuz like Elrond thinks it's a great honor still. He's like, and he's, and he's sad to see her go, but at the same time, he's not sad because it's, it's not like they're dead. They're just in Valinor. It, it's so, yeah, it, it's just th these kind of scenes. I don't know how to fix them. I just know that from a, from a casual viewer perspective, they're confusing. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't want to go to Valinor. Right. And everyone else does. Yeah. So, it's like why not and it's she has unfinished business but but okay what's so great about valinor why does everyone want to go there why don't they just all go like they they do try to like i think they, well, do they don't they, yeah, they don't re they don't really explain that why it's yeah they, they try to hint at it um and we see that with uh 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 Keller Brimbor later um but uh for now it's kind of confusing Okay, so I think we're in the Southlands now, and yeah. <clears throat> the village the village seems well done to me. Uh, we meet Arondir. He's like a smart guy because he walks by and he like tells that guy to, he, how he can win in three moves. Yeah. Um, and he has got good hearing. He can hear them say poisoning. Yeah. Uh, and then we we meet Bronwyn. Uh. I, I think I my notes get pretty sparse here. I just wrote true king myth. And uh, Arondir stops Waldrig from pummeling, <laughs> punching <laughs> Ro Rowan. <laughs> He's calm. So Arondir's like calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> <laughs> so my notes just trail off into a, f uh, a big uh, fan gush about uh, Waldrig. Um I will yeah. say, of all the sets in this show, which are great, his tavern might be the best. I've said it before. Most places get taverns wrong. They they modernize them to the point where they, it's almost like a modern um, well, that's cottage. That's a good point. His hut and his acting, it feels so real. Like that's that's a tavern. There's nothing. There's a few benches. There's a little place for him to cut some meat, and there's a fire. That's it. That's all there was. Um, and also his outfit, just, a just an apron. I don't even know if he's wearing <laughs> pants under there. I don't even know. It's just an apron and it's awesome. It's a great look. And, and the actor, I, I think the actor steals the scene here, even though it's supposed to be about an elf coming in here and, and the racism between humans and elves. Waldrig is still just <laughs> he's just a fun kid like he he just walks up and goes to punch this kid <laughs> it's just so good <laughs> but yeah so we we get i i guess a lot of the casuals will get a uh a much deeper appreciation for the elves and uh how they are they are everything is basically heightened with them it seems yeah um that's true yeah yeah 
And so you can see why animosity might grow between the humans and the elves. Not only the unusually long lifespan of elves, which is almost, it's, they're immortal, essentially. They are immortal if they choose to go to Valinor. Um, so humans have to cope with death like that. And at the same time, the elves are just better than them with almost all of their senses. They're stronger than them, everything. So uh, you can see why these humans feel subjugated, even though um, the elves might not see it that way. Mm. Uh, okay, so we got Bronwyn and Rondir in the back. And there's like Alpharin seeds. He hasn't seen these since he was a child. So it's a kind of flirty. And then I wrote, I ship it. <laughs> I can't really <laughs> ship it. <up. laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we all do. And uh, even the townsfolk, everyone's talking about it. <laughs> that's why That's why Theo's dad left. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I think I wrote, why would Theo's dad leave? <laughs> Bronwyn is perfect. <laughs> I think a Actually, little... It made, it made me think about that, too, because didn't... Like, there's this thing that went on with, like, uh, her, her and Tom Cruise. Like, she was, like, offered to Tom Cruise as, like, a Scientology perk. And Oh, I think I do remember this. And he ended up like, I don't know, I think she said something like feminist and it pissed him off. So he's like, nope, not that one. <laughs> not that one. And then she got up and then she wasn't, she like didn't even, she was just expressed that she was sad that the relationship was over. And then, uh, then the Scientology like went off at her for speaking bad about Tom Cruise, I think. Something like that. But, uh, Anyway, I was thinking like, what was Tom Cruise thinking? This yeah. this woman, this woman's like in her in her late forties. She's still absolutely beautiful. Yep. Like this is, like this is uh, that was uh, I think Tom Cruise screwed up. But well, I actually make a point to say, <laughs> of all the, the for whatever reason, I know the reason. Everyone else in this town is given rags. She, oh, yeah. She's in this, like, she is in an a, an amazing outfit that really like. That really makes her stand out, which I I know is kind of the point, but at the same time, who is she? That she's almost like got like luxury clothing compared to everyone else around here. Yeah, um, yeah. So it is I, kind of a weird contrast there. Well, but. they're 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 doing that. Uh, well, actually, I don't know. This is probably a terrible analogy, but I'm thinking of Schindler's List. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, it's the woman, I, the little girl in the red. So yeah, there's other there's other movies that do that, like <laughs> Sin City. If you want to get a bit. But closer to this but you're right schindler's list does a good job of it too um but yeah so like that's kind of what they're doing i don't know if it works for me like i kind of wish she fit in a bit better but at the same time i get it like she's supposed to be you're almost she's supposed to view her as good. as from the elves perspective like she stands out mm -hmm. um so yeah uh <laughs> So yeah, we get uh, we get some little. And we meet the elf friend, and we establish that this is this relationship is not approved by the other elves. And yeah, he talks about how all elf human relationships end. This only happened twice, and they both ended in tragedy and death. Yeah, um, I and I so I actually think we should have gotten more here. Maybe there's some extended cut version. I would have liked to hear more from all these other elves that are on watch here. Because uh, I think that's part of what's missing from this uh, part of the world where we get the side of the, the townspeople who are upset that the elves are constantly checking in on them. And I want to get the point of view of the elves. We get a little bit of it. We get we get a bit. Um, especially from the commanding officer here. Uh, where he's, it's, he's like, we're not here because, you know, this region was, was fighting with Sauron. We're here because these people... We're fighting with Sauron or something like that, and it's like, oh, so this guy still views them as oh, like. But it, but he is right. Like Waldrick, I think I think Waldrick is like a cult leading like an underground cult. He, well, so, yeah, he was right, but I, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not saying he wasn't right. He was right, um, but <laughs> but I wish we got more of that dynamic where we got the townspeople saying like, leave us alone. Like you're 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 basically. Um, uh, an, an army that has invaded us and hasn't left and you're 
you're you constantly are coming in and like investigating us and meanwhile they are correct to do so waldrake has been like i don't understand he's been like secretly somehow he's so got the about, sword it's and about, it's, it's about colonialism yeah <laughs> exactly no i i like i like the dynamic but, but, the, but the undertone is that colonialism is actually good <laughs> right so <laughs> <laughs> and this is part of the problem with some of these shows where they forget what their <laughs> their meaning is behind some of this stuff. But um, in the end, I actually like a lot of these elves as well. I think they all do a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah. So they're disbanding the outpost. He's been there for 79 years. Uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, then the cow comes by and there's, like, sludge that comes out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. he uh, Arondir goes to Bronwyn, right? And yeah. then... Because he's going to stay. He's not, he doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay. Then they find out, oh, that cow ate that poison grass that they were yeah. talking about. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, this, we've solved the mystery. Uh, so, as I wrote, Arondir, more character establishment. Arondir is proactive. He could have just gone home, but he goes to Hodern to investigate. Yeah. Um, now, I a couple things. One, I don't understand how far, like how far removed are we from the elves leaving? Like, are they still in the region? Could he not go to them and say, "Hey, hold on a second, there might be something here that that we we should maybe look at just before we go." Also, um, Bronwyn going with him seems like a bad idea. Like, I get she she explains why. I'm just like it's kind of like it's just the two of you going by yourselves to a place that's like kind of sketch right now all right this this <laughs> might not go well. I, I i i don't think it ends up being that bad of a decision it's just i thought maybe they should bring more people like some townsfolk or or something yeah. um, like someone who knows what they're doing like waldrick <laughs> yeah bring waldrick i love him <laughs> get him more screen time please uh uh yeah uh, so we go we're back to the ship to to valinor right Galadriel is like being haunted by being. There. So, so I, before we get to the ship part, because you probably have some notes, but I'm kind of confused. Uh, I've watched this on this revisit. She's already said she's not going, and yet she, she's getting on this ship. Um, now we know, everyone knows she's not going. Uh, I don't get this whole point. Is it just to show us what it's like to get close to Valinor? Because that's true. Like, yeah, maybe that's a good visual. But like. Her character well, does it doesn't think, make sense to get on the well, ship. Well, like, I think like we we want to like make it seem like there was like a, an actual internal struggle. Like Elrond got to her. Like true, like, you're Elrond, right. The, the previous scene, Elrond does do a good job convincing her. And, and and she's like, okay, well, if something does happen, at least Elrond will. Elrond's promised me he'll take care of it. Yeah. And he's, she's been told to go. She knows she's being sent there. So she's like, okay, this is like, it's like, like it's like being told to resign. Like, okay, yeah. I have to do it. So she's, she's on the boat. She's really weighing it and it's eating her more and more. And then they play into that quote. Sometimes you have to touch the, touch the darkness or whatever yeah. to know where the light is. And then, then we know she's really struggling because she's willing to jump out in the middle of the ocean to, yeah. to do this, and her plan is just to swim back. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, you are real. You being really charitable here, like, good job on you. Um, because like, goddamn, th there's no way she's getting back. <laughs> well, that's uh, how determined she is. Yeah. She's so determined that she's willing to jump into the. Ocean. Yeah, I guess they gotta. They they. I just think there's maybe ways to make that a bit more clear because from my perspective this is a this is suicide like it, yeah and, and is that does she know that or does she, like i is she just we, insane is it this? absolutely a style like i guess it is uh because i don't i don't quite understand the dynamics but i guess going to valinor is a one-way trip you, you can't go back once you go in yeah that's that's my understanding as well um so I'm, I'm. It's unclear to me. Because maybe like just go to Valinor for like a few years, see how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> now I will say, I will say, I think this scene is important. I don't want to get rid of the ship scene as much as I don't think it, it works as well as as it should, because in the original trilogy, we do have Galadriel finally 
say, okay, I can now go to the Undying Lands. So it does work in, in that regard for me, where we, if we build up to that kind of Galadriel, we're going to get to see that, that full transition. And we'll, and this will be, this will help heighten that moment in the original trilogy. Um, but it just, this jumping off the ship is kind of crazy to me. And uh, a lot of things have to go right for this to work is my problem. Um, which when that happens in the story, it's, it's usually kind of just random stuff happening. It doesn't really do anything with the plot as much. So that's my worry when she jumps off this ship is like, this is a crazy action from a crazy individual that's going to need a lot of luck and a lot of random events happening for her to even have a chance at success. Um, which sometimes you, you need for your character, but this, uh, it just seems a bit much, uh, especially in this situation where there should be no ships out like here. This is just for elves. <laughs> no one's yeah, going to be out she's here. She's got a long swim. Uh, okay. <laughs> so the High King uh, actually, so we found the High King actually does believe Gladriel that Sauron yep. is out there, but he thinks that she will awaken Dormant Evil, so she'll like a, she'll make it happen. There'll be like self-fulfilling prophecy, yeah, this sort of thing. Uh, true. Uh, so it's just true and not true because, um, like he thinks he'll she'll awaken the evil. I I, I did comment that Adar and this orc thing was already going on even without Galadriel being a factor here. So there still would have been. Mordor still would have formed, and just, I mean, she did bring Sauron into the picture. That is true, but all this Adar stuff happened completely independently of the latter. Yeah, and right, right under the <laughs> the elves' noses too. <laughs> yeah. Um. But so I, my note says uh, the High King is it has been set up to be a puppet master, and in this scene, you can see him buying off Elrond, um, buying his loyalty. Uh. So. I kind of like that. It's not that he's an evil king. He's almost he's almost um, just set up to be a an impediment to some of our characters. Not in like a I want to do harm to people, but in a I'm the king and what I say goes, and I believe this. Um, so I kind of like that dynamic, especially with elves. I always like it when elves uh, get too get too high and mighty for their own good. Um, so I'm hoping that we get to see a little bit of a fall from grace for this guy, but I do like how he's first established here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my take on, on the King right now. So we're bringing Calabrimbor in. Yep. Like, yep. Uh, I, I've had some harsh things to say about, uh, this actor. I, I, I have, there are some scenes where he's really good. I will say that he's not all bad. He's a decent actor at times. There's just sometimes his character can be silly uh, in a way that is not becoming of the elf that I know, mm -hmm. the elves that I know. Um, so now we have static going through star charts and and this is getting to what my my thing is like the skies are strange and yet he doesn't seem too concerned about it. That uh, he's concerned but not like. Yeah. Like he's he's been given clues to move and he's like not given the go ahead. So it's unclear what like is going on with his book. <laughs> I wish we knew more. <laughs> uh, and then I have Nori is curious and then Sadik just shuts it down. Like he doesn't want to tell her anything about yeah, this. You can't you can't know the secrets. Now, it's interesting though. She's curious. Doesn't someone need to be curious to get the job to open this book and do the sky yes. charts? Like someone has to take up the mantle. Maybe, maybe instead of shutting the book in her face, you start to, you start to say, "Oh, she could maybe take over for someone down the road." I should start cultivating her interest in the, these things. Um, yeah. So it, I, I just these little things where I'm like, why is everyone so like harsh against against Nori? It's it's uh, her dad is nice. Her dad appreciates her, but everyone else is like. You're rather strange, Harfoot, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're back to Bronwyn and Arondir, and Arondir says something that the, the people of Horde are, are very loyal to 
Sauron, and then Bronwyn kind of gets offended by that. Yeah. And... Yeah. Um, and we're gonna get more of that. I, I like those. I like that dynamic where they are in love, but at the same time they're still struggling with these, with these uh, racist. I should like the racist tendencies they have towards each other, in a weird way. It's kind of it's kind of a interesting dynamic to have. Uh, so okay, if Galadriel goes all the way to the gates of Valinor. This shows how torn she is. She wants to: do I obey the king or do I continue my quest? She remembers her brother's wisdom and bails into the open ocean. She sees the light of Valinor and the light in the sky, and knows which light to follow. <laughs> Did you read the script? Is that in the script? That's what I wrote here. Oh, that might be like that. Might literally be the scene direction for the script. For all I know, goddamn. Uh, I I wrote she goes a bit crazy and jumps in the water. <laughs> so, I like I know the ship isn't gonna turn around, but I uh, I just it's weird that we got this far. I think it would be just as impactful. I know they wanted to show Valinor. I think it would be just as impactful for her to be on the the deck of the ship as it's setting sail and then turning back, like right in that moment. Or, or having a buildup as she walks towards the ship. You can have that same idea. She's walking towards the ship. It's going to go. And as she gets on it, she's she. this isn't right. And she leaves. And, and she has to flee because now she's basically going against the king. I, I, so something like that. It's just the, the swimming thing. I, I Yeah, you're, the what you've said is right. She despite her impending doom by jumping into the ocean she knows it's the right thing to do because she's she she isn't ready to go to valinor i i i just i just don't like it <laughs> i just wish it was i wish it wasn't so happenstance like that i wish it had had more believability that that like she's not going to survive this like this you could just say roll credits end of the show she's dead <laughs> Like, she shouldn't survive this, right? Like, this should be over for her. <laughs> she is so far out there. People, like, it's, she's in the middle of, like, the Atlantic yeah, Ocean. Boats don't go there, yeah. <laughs> Nobody goes this far. And and so, basically, she, for all, for the, the elves that go to Valinor, they probably think she's dead. Because she just dives off into the, in the ocean. Um, and that's that's my one issue here is that this ends up taking us on a crazy journey through the water that has a lot more of that happenstance happening instead of her making decisions like so episode two when we get to it i think is is weaker because of the decision to have her jump off the ship here because it doesn't allow her to have as much agency um and i guess that's my true issue with this is that the character just no longer in, in any sort of control of anything it's things are happening to her yeah but that is the end of episode one um well we, well, we have the cancer leaf fall oh true true we have we have like a bit of a a bit of a a hint and, and then and nori does go to this uh meteor crater and the the stranger is in there oh that that's right that's right that is at the end of that episode Cause that's that's where we start episode two, um, but yeah, uh, the 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 leaf falling I think is a good scene. I like that it's included. It even got me thinking that like, like, Gilglad could be Sauron just because of that <laughs> moment, which I think is fun. Obviously, I knew the whole time <laughs> it wasn't gonna be Gilglad. I just I didn't want it to be super obvious. But <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Um, but yeah, anything else to add? I mean, I, I think the episode, it's not as strong as it probably could have been, but it's stronger than I remember. Uh, it's, it's a lot of just character establishment. Yeah. And like when, when we've removed our preconceived notions or attempted to, um, like maybe it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> right. So for like the Harfoots, I, I need to work on that a lot. The elves though, the, the elves... <laughs> They shouldn't have as much of a drastic change because elves are very stubborn. Yeah, not and, culturally. Yeah, you're right. There. And they like Elrond is Elrond is going to change quite a bit 
And and I'm gonna support that change because I actually like this Elrond character we have, and I like the Elrond character in the original trilogy. But that he's an unusual elf in that regard. Um, most elves are not gonna be like that, and they're gonna hold firm to their ideas and their culture through for for millennia. Um, and so that's why there are times where uh, uh, Keller Brimbor is weird in a, in a weird way um doesn't seem natural a uh, natural elf just because of how he how he his mannerisms because we're used to the mannerisms of the elves in the original trilogy and in the hobbit movies too and they're all very consistent um so th that's my one area where i think like my preconceived notions shouldn't be affected here i should still be able to enjoy these elves and for the most part, I do. Uh, it's just there's moments where it's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, all in all, I, I think I did I did appreciate it more knowing, look, we have to establish these characters. We can't just jump in off the deep end. Uh, the original trilogy has an easier job because they can start with one character. Um, Bilbo, Frodo... And then Gandalf gets in, and then Sam, like they can add characters as they go because it's always within that purview. Here, they have to jump back and forth to all these different people that aren't interacting yet, and so they yes. do have a harder job. They don't have enough time. Like like an entire episode should have been dedicated to just one character, and that would have probably been better. But they they want to tell different stories, which I fully support. So I get you're gonna have limited time in each episode to do that. Um, but all in all, my final takeaway is that dialogue is not as bad as I originally thought. I've recently rewatched, uh, the return of the King. There is some comparable dialogue, not, not the return of the King dialogue is bad. There's comparable dialogue in here that shows me that there, there is some good dialogue that, that works. Um, there's just others that they maybe try too hard and, and I get, that. I, I would probably do the same thing. You really, you know, you have a lot to live up to with, uh, with what's happening in the original trilogy so i'm gonna try and and keep that in mind as we move forward uh yeah so let me know let, let us know down below uh how many times have you guys watched the first episode and uh have you guys watched it recently and try it because you might be pleasantly surprised